Hello, fight fans. Welcome to another episode of More Than a Fight podcast. I'm your host, Jose Alfredo Alcazar. And behind the camera, we have John. And usually in this chair to my left, we have Juan. But he's on vacation in Nayarit somewhere, probably eating and drinking like any reasonable person would that's on vacation. Anyway, um, let's kick it off because we had a jam packed Saturday of non stop action from start to finish whether it was in the uk or over here in the states uh where do you want to start john i guess we start off with probably the most uh controversial match of the night with uh tia female lopez versus sandor martin Mm -hmm. yes uh this one didn't well i kind of not predicted, but I did say if it goes, um, if it's close after five or six rounds and it goes into the later rounds, Delfimo is going to have a problem. That was my prediction as far as like how the fight might play out and if it played out in this fashion. And what I kind of felt could happen did happen. Yeah. And I mean, as in Sandor was a lot trickier and tough for uh, Teofimo to really land solid shots on. Mm -hmm. And as the fight continued to progress, I felt like, again, his corner, his trainer, and this being his dad in this instance, really didn't seem to offer him much uh, technical advice as to what to do or what Sandor was doing to counter his offense. Yeah, I mean, even with Lopez saying that um sandor was running you know what i mean and i mean don't get me wrong there was instances of that um but power wise i think it was pretty good on more on lopez's side of course right Mm -hmm. um you know they both did damage it's a it's a very interesting and i i have some of the numbers um here we go so yeah this is the comp box numbers you know, it's weird. Dang, yeah, Tofimo out through him, huh? Yeah, now, don't be wrong. Looking at the stats and stuff like that, it doesn't really tell the fight. That's true. But, you know, we have to try to take as many data points as we can get. Mm-hmm. You know, so yeah, out through him, out landed him. You know, in the, I guess the mid-rounds? I mean, almost every round, he out, out, through, out through him. Yeah. So it's, it's a weird one. Now, I think it's because of the defense of Sandor. Yeah, I was going to say a lot of Teofimo's punches did not land um, mm-hmm. effectively because of Sa- the way Sandor was uh, countering and moving around. Um, and then uh, just in the event some of the fans that are listening didn't watch it, uh, Sandor Martin did put Teofimo down in the second round yep. with a counter right check hook kind of grazed him up here near the temple area and put him down. And then where things get controversial is not only was it a close fight, but in the seventh round, to my eyes, Sandor Martin appeared to put him down again with the similar shot. But the referee didn't count it. He called it a slip. And this is where we need replay. The World Cup is going on right now. The World Cup goes to the VAR, the VAR, the Video Assistant Referee. Boxing needs to implement this because this had a huge impact on what you're showing now, the scoring of the fight. I thought Sandor got two knockdowns on Delfimo. Had they counted that knockdown, I think Sandor wins the fight. Yeah, I mean, they did score the round for him, but... uh, It would have been a 10-8. Yeah, 10-8. And I mean, some of the judge, the, this 97 92. Yeah, that one I don't agree with. This one is the issue right here. This is a Pascal Procesio. And yeah, this is, I mean, you had Teddy Atlas out there complaining about the judges, you know, openly saying Ricky this is Gonzalez, a rough- that's the ref. Yes. I, uh, I just don't know how they did. See that, but that's where they need to start implementing replays, especially for that. Yeah. If you 
if you're wondering whether it was a slip or a knockdown, it matters. They should have been able to to replay it quickly right then and there. No, so or maybe the do, referees need to start have start having an earpiece again, like they're doing in the World Cup right now. No, 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 no. So you just let him let the referee rule it, whatever. Right? Mm-hmm. If he thinks this is a slip, let it go as a slip. But in between rounds, yes, it's reviewed that that you could do that too. Yes, and in then you say, rounds, oh wait, wait, wait. Somebody as the as the two fighters go to the corners, yeah, the exactly. Ref, somebody calls the ref over and says, after we saw it on our monitor, yeah. it's clearly a knockdown. We so we're, let's make sure we change it. And then you the let next the corners. You let the corners know, yes. hey, that was a knockdown. That and was you let not... the commentary team know, hey, yeah. we're changing it. It is a knockdown. Yeah, because and, again, that was. That turned the fight. Yeah. That gave the fight to Tofimo, essentially. Because it's, he did land some effective shots on Sandor in the later rounds. But at the same time, again, I didn't feel all of them landed effective. Yeah. And then, I don't know if you saw this. So this is on ESPN Broadcast. And they actually have the audio on it. Uh, I have it muted. Uh-huh. But you can, he basically says, do I still have it? Oh, yeah, yeah. You could read his lips. Do I still got it? And then the guy next to him, he's like, yeah, you got it, man. And this is why oh, I, I didn't got this. didn't see that. This is why I got this picture. Because this, I feel, is, I mean, you hate oh, to say Oh, I see it. what you're saying. You know, that, I, that tells the story of. Yeah, what's going on? The contrast between the team. Yeah, man. Like. Yeah, that's, that's tough. You but, never want to see a boxer sp- sit there and be like, bro, do I still got it? You know what I mean? Like. Yeah. I think ultimately my biggest takeaway from this is Tofimo, if he wants to stay at 140 and get back to the top of the hill, he has to get rid of his dad. Yeah. I think his dad is the number one problem. I agree 100%. Tofimo has the skill. There is no doubt. But you do not have the right person in your corner, whether it's from a boxing standpoint or a psychological standpoint, guiding you. And then even... And then th- I really think this will be a testament to what his father does. Because any fighter, whether it be MMA, MMA does it a lot more, I think, than boxing. Switching camps, switching coaches, you know what I mean? It's, I think it's more pre- prevalent in MMA than boxing. But this is the time when you have a boxer questioning himself, you know? You, you need to change a lot of shit up. Yeah. and. You know what I'm saying? Like, we need to just change stuff up, see what happens. Yeah, I, I think he, he definitely, I, I, I think that without a doubt, his dad's the problem. Because that's exactly what I had said when we did the prediction, or when we touched on these fights. I said, if it goes into the later rounds, that's where we're going to have some problems. Because I just don't feel his dad knows how to implement the technical adjustments that need to be made during a fight, especially when you're fighting somebody like Sandor who is aware of what who Teofimo is and the risks that come with fighting Teofimo and and how you need to adjust to fighting him. And Teofimo is a world beater. You know what I mean? Like, any good day, he can beat anybody. You know what I mean? He's He's that skilled, you know? It's just unfortunate to see because, yeah, anybody could have told you, any other coach would be like hey we need we're not doing we're not winning here you know what i mean like you really need to start ch- making adjustments stop chasing him around the ring start you know what i'm saying boxing off there yeah i don't know I just, yeah no no it wasn't unfortunately it was another questionable showing yeah for Delfimo. Yeah. and i honestly just can't help but think had they counted that a knockdown what would have happened yeah well and how much would that have not just uh, changed the mindset of Sandor, but changed the approach of Delfimo? Would then his dad have panicked and said, we need to knock him out? And would they have started to swing for the fences? And what would have happened there? Mm-hmm. So there's so many things. And they need to change this. Get a damn replay. Change it during the fight. Don't just say it was a slip. And then we can watch a replay and say, that wasn't a slip. That was a knockdown. Because you're hurting Sandor Martin. He could have gone from beating Mikey Garcia to now beating Teofimo Lopez. And then he gets catapulted. And again, this affects his pocket. We need to fix this problem. That's a 
huge thing, man. No, okay, listen. That in itself is not that bad as compared to the judging. A 97-92. Come on. Yeah, no, it was it was a close that, the fight from start to finish. The 97-92 is what really changed the entire fight. Yeah, at no point did I feel Tofimo was dominating. No, and that's what I'm saying. Like, you, you can get mad at the ref, but listen, that guy is human. Yeah. The uh, judging, though, when you're that far off, you know what I mean? But okay, let's stay with the judging. Because I, I, I know I don't, don't want to linger on this one too much, but real quick, just last point. If they call that, uh, they count that a knockdown, then what does that judge's scorecard looking, look like after that? So, it's going to be 97, 90, or 96, 93. Possibly, it would just be, it would but just again, be... what, what happens in the minds of the fighters oh going forward God. into the next one? Yeah. It just yeah. sucks. Yeah. All they right. need to change that. Let's move it along. Yes, sir. Okay, so moving on to some action with the co-main. Yes, sir. Mr. Uh, what was Jared Big Baby Anderson. Against Bernard? I thought, it was, I thought he fought Forrest. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, Forrest. Uh, no, you're right. Joey Forrest? No, Jarrell Ford. Jarrell, thank you. There you go. And there, and he looked, came in with the uh, festive. All right. The Grinch. And listen, he was swinging for the fence. I mean, come on. No, yeah, I mean. And Anderson he ate one. Just... Boom. He ate it like it was nothing. But uh, ends up with a six round finish. Had him, had him, re- mm. he didn't, uh, that's good it. call, yeah, because no need for that man to continue to take a beating, because Anderson is special, man, he has, I know we've said it before, he's got everything, man. No, he's 100% got everything, you know what I mean, he's got the speed, the body, you know, the look, he's an American heavyweight, you know, what, what do you do with him? Uh, yeah, that's that's the part. Um, I'm trying to see where, he, dude, right here in heavyweights, from number one, which is Tyson Fury, to number twenty five. Where do you think he is? Twenty. He's not even on here. What? I know. Is this that's boxer? Wrong. Yeah. All right, hold on, hold on. That's crazy. Or am I reading? I'm pretty sure I'm reading this right. No. No, you just gotta look up his. Wow. Name. But these are all the he- the top heavyweights from one to twenty five. So he is. I would like He's, to see-, see. That's the thing. You're looking at box rack, right? He's yes. number three of three fifty two in the. What is this? U.S. Mm-hmm. U.S. heavyweight rankings. Well, this I'm assuming is the top twenty five in the world because they're all nationalities. Yeah, but that's boxer. Yeah, but anyway, I just found that funny. Um, yeah. I would like to see Jared Anderson fight somebody like Andy Ruiz, Dillian White. No, I don't think he gets Andy Ruiz yet. No, he Dillian, can fight Dillian White. Dillian White's gonna fight Joshua. I don't believe so. You saw uh, them Anthony talking Joshua about... didn't seem to care for that after that performance. No, of course he doesn't. I I don't know. I don't, um... I would think even maybe maybe Kurab Pulev actually. He okay. could he could fight Pulev. Or even Frank Sanchez. So yeah. I think another up and comer, definitely keep an eye on him. Absolutely. Jared Big Baby Anderson. He's and an, exciting. And we move on to the next guy, Keyshawn Davis. Fighting a very tough uh Burgos. Mm-hmm. Uh, and look good. Oh yeah, he definitely dominated, but uh, Burgo, I've seen Burgos fight before, so I wasn't surprised that Burgos did not, uh, he wasn't able to put him away. Yeah. Because he's just tough as can be, man. But Davis keeps, keeps impressing, and he's just got to keep it going. Look really good. I think in 2023, we could definitely see him in there with somebody on his level to a certain degree, but I'm not sure if he'll get the big title fights in 2023 because of his weight class. I yeah. know they. I, I hate when they show belts like that because I'm like, where did you get that belt? Because that belt, dude. Everybody but got a belt. Jared got a belt. Yeah, he I know. got a belt. It's it's so silly. 
Freaking uh, Lopez got a belt. Everybody's got a damn belt. And you know That's who else? The problem. So who do you think uh, Keyshawn Davis should fight next? Oh man, it only it's hard to say because this is only a seventh fight. Yeah, so, but he's a silver Olympic medalist. I mean, yeah. so he's definitely got the skills. Yeah, but I don't. With seven fights, I don't think there's a need to really put him in with somebody crazy crazy yet unfortunately 2023 he's gonna have to keep building up his profile and maybe in 2024 he'll be able to um lure one of the champions into a fight but i just don't see it happening in 2023 because he's gonna have at least three fights i would like to believe in 2023 so that's 10 fights and i don't think he'll be getting a title shot in 2023 i mean because of the it's a good sign this is his third fight this is here uh, and then he fought four times last year, so he's busy. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's just that 135. It's gonna be tough to lure any of the top guys into a championship fight. We'll see. All right. And They're then, very young. And also another young up and comer on the card. That's why I thought it was a fantastic card for that. Was uh, Xander Yias versus Zayas, yeah. Um, Salazar. Yes, sir. I was surprised, Salazar. Was looking like he was going to get knocked out, Mm -hmm. but he came back. Yes. And I felt like I could be wrong, but I feel like this is almost the exact same thing that happened when he fought Elias Espadas in his last fight. Like, Xander was dominating, but for some reason, Espadas was still there. But, no, no, no. I thought he knocked him out. Espadas? Did he? I got that. I got that. I didn't think he did. Yeah, TKO, Espadas, in the uh, fifth round. Or maybe I'm thinking of somebody else then. Okay. Yeah, yeah, man, yeah. I'm, I'm mistaken. But no, yeah, Salazar stayed in the fight, man. He went the distance with him. But more importantly, Salazar landed some shots. Yes. And this isn't the first time that that happened to Xander. But took him well and just kept going and going and going. And I thought he looked good. Yeah. No, he looked good without a shot of a doubt. He keeps looking very good. Yeah. It's just you ask yourself if a guy like this can land on some shots on you. And granted, it could be as simple as, you know what, Xander's just trying to entertain the crowd. Because he's in New York. This, Puerto he's Rican, Puerto Rican. He knows it's a Puerto Rican crowd and he wants to put on a show. So that could very well be it. And yeah. maybe when he fights somebody top notch, he'll look completely different. So I could that could very well be it. But he's I think, just trying to please the crowd. I think that was what was really good about the card was that you had these really good up-and-coming fighters on a big card, you know, and um, they all got a little bit of shine for it, you know? Yes, sir. And then a strange card, but... Oh, we're we're jumping into Omaha? Yes, sir. We're moving to Omaha, Nebraska. To Nebraska. With your buddy... Terrence Bud Crawford against David Avenisian. And... It was a rough day at the office for Dave. Yeah, man. But he, he gave it his, his best. He really did. No. And the look, place was, I mean, of course, the Omaha is going to be packed. But. Yeah. Props to Crawford for putting on. Look at that. Yeah. He always gets um, knocked at for certain things at times that I feel are so dumb and just minuscule. But, but no, Avenisian did, he did his very best and he at times would land these wild overhand uh, right punches. But Crawford is just, Crawford, he's too damn good. I still think he's the best welterweight on the planet. And, Inclu- special, and I'm including Earl Spence in This that. angle? Beautiful. Oh. Oh. It was just right on the end of the punch, right on the end of the chin. And he knocked him out cold. Yeah. That wasn't just a knockout. He was out cold. And then the, uh, the homies there. Yes, sir. You know? Hanging out. The Regis Progre and Shakur Stevenson. Yeah. And he, Shakur said it. He's like, I think Crawford's just the best on uh, the best on the planet. He agrees that he's better than Earl Spence. With all due respect to Earl. But aren't they yeah, but, uh, talking quick, about uh, A quick honorable mention or something that I felt was really cool was this main event was refereed by uh, a female. Yeah. And her name was Sparkle Lee. Yes. Uh, I'm not being funny. That was her name, right, John? Yes. Sparkle? Sparkly? No, yes. Sparkle, then Lee. Yes. 
Yeah. So that was pretty cool to see a a female referee in a um, male boxing event as that a main event refereeing the main event. So that yep. was that was a pretty cool thing, and that was on BLK Prime. And I felt like they did a pretty good uh, job as far as production is concerned. Or how did you see it? Uh, yes. For their first time. That's not their first time. We've, we've seen... Black. In a big fight like this? Oh, I thought yeah, it was. Okay, that was... That's, well, okay, that's maybe why I find it a little bit... Like, it's just like the rest of the stuff. You know what I mean? Like, pump it up a little bit. I mean, they did have Chris Cyborg... Yes. Versus uh, Holloway. Holloway, yeah. And that I mean, was a little tough to watch. Yeah. And that was the co-main four round, two minutes around. Like, it's so strange that, I mean, I get it. You have Cyborg. She's got the name recognition. But why have that, uh, why do you have an eight minute co-main? Yeah, that was a little odd. Yeah. <clears throat> and But let's give Cyborg a little bit of props. I thought she improved yes. a lot. Look, From the come, last time we saw her in the ring in Brazil, to this time, yeah, she looked like she looked like she's been working in the gym on her technique. No, hundred percent looks completely different than the last fight. Unfortunately, um, Halloway just, I mean, yeah. you I can mean, only say so much. You know, I had a couple cocktails in me, so I was like, <laughs> "Why isn't she finishing her?" But yeah, like, you know, but technically, that was the whole point: was you to show up in the U.S. U.S. debut. And knock this chick out. Yeah. You know, because obviously on the she's, card. she's jockeying for the money fight, which yeah. is Katie Taylor. Yeah. Okay. But me personally, I do not want to see that fight based no. on what I saw. Okay. And yes, I know you need the right dance partner, but I don't want to see it because I think Chris Cyborg would get hurt. Okay. And let's move to the biggest upset of the day. And that was um, Chris Warrington. Yes. Versus no Josh Warrington against um Luis Alberto Lopez. Yeah. In leads in at Leeds. that. And this is the type of fight that Juan loves when the, yes. the British Juan fighters... called it. To his credit, Juan called it, but he didn't have the balls to bet. And I hope he's watching this part. <laughs> Cause even before the fight, he's like, Should I put money on Lopez? Should I put money on Lopez? I feel like he's gonna win. No, and I'm like, loves, do it. He loves it when the British champ, like, let's bring a Mexican over, see what happens. Yeah. And it doesn't work out. But you would think, or at least I was thinking was, Warrington seen this movie before, so he's going to know how to handle it. Yeah. And I was wrong. And the, the, Yeah, because the way this fight started was all wrong, you know? And mm-hmm. then, of course, the little headbutt. Well, the, the thing is, I'm, I don't even know how to like put it into context. It's just, this happens with Warrington. All the time. They were actually... He cut Kiko Martinez with a headbutt. He cut Mauricio Lara with a headbutt. And now he cut this dude, Luis Alberto Lopez, with a headbutt. So it's just Warrington has a very awkward style or an awkward way of coming in where his head finds the other guy's head. And they, more often than not, get cut somewhere around the eye. They were actually uh, talking about it before the fight. Mm-hmm. Because it, unfortunately, it's it a thing with him. Yeah. I don't know. But no, this was yeah, this was just a I was now vexed a lot of the time watching Warrington's fight cuz I kept telling I think I did it on our uh group chat and I kept telling Juan I'm like he keeps he, this is what uh Warrington was doing a lot yeah. of the times and Luis Alberto Lopez was throwing punches, was pressing him and mm-hmm. Warrington seemed to stay here. Yeah. And I'm like you can't win a fight that way. And not only that, he kept moving backwards. And then Lopez with those leaping jabs. Yes, yeah, those lunging. are very. He was throwing some very awkward punches at times. Yeah, like and, like you said, lunging, and I don't know how Warrington, at one point or another, didn't try to counter that or anticipate it and catch him off balance. Now, Warrington's credit. This is the eleventh round, mm-hmm. but he did came back ten, eleven, twelve. The eleventh round was so odd to me. Well, that's why I brought it up because, like, look at his reaction when he gets hit. Okay, so. Now, yeah, he seemed to be complaining a lot, too. I didn't like that about Lopez. I, yeah. I didn't, uh, at times, I, I was just as confused with him. I'm like, you're, you're doing a very good job. You're winning the fight up to this point, and now you're going to give the rounds away? Yeah. That part had me confused and frustrated all at once because 
Yeah, I, I mean, thought Lopez could have won this fight by a wider margin than what you're showing here, yeah. which is one judge had a draw. The other two had the exact same score, 113, 115. But if you look at the one, the one judge gave him all lo- last four rounds to Warrington. See that? Oh, yes, that part I agree with because I thought Warrington won the last. No, four. that's what I mean. Like Lopez kind of now Lopez has never been past the 10th round. Yes, that's right. You know, so it's an interesting fight. Um, it was, it I, was we were tough. surprised that Lopez won. Yes, you I know, thought they were going to give it to Warrington yeah, based on home him sweeping the last four rounds. Yeah, a little home cooking. Yeah, but uh, enough rounds in the bank mm-hmm. for Lopez and takes it home. Yeah, that and that's tough for Warrington because let's give a shout out to Leeds because they packed that arena. Yeah, they are huge supporters. The way they were, if you watch Warrington's entrance. The whole entire arena is singing with him. It's singing for him because they have a, I don't know what it's called, but it's it's a song about Leeds and how how great Leeds is. And that's basically what the song is about. And then, um, yeah, you have Warrington talking after the fight. Like, I don't know what, what I'm going to do. Yeah, it's tough it, because uh, this isn't the first time. Yeah. And so, I mean, with the Lopez fight, that is you know, upset of the day. We'll go to the co-main, but we're going to talk about Lopez again yes. uh, when we get to the Conlon fight. Absolutely. Um, and the co-main to me was my favorite fight, maybe of the entire night. That was the blonde bomber, Ebony... What was it? Sorry. Ebony Bridges. Versus... Shannon O'Connell. O'Connell. And they were both Aussies. Yep. Yeah. So this was a battle of the Aussies and also battle of- for uh, the championship belt, the IBF, if I'm not mistaken, bantamweight um, championship belt, which Ebony Bridges was defending on this one. And man, did they go at it. No. Oh. And O'Connell, oof, she took some shots. I mean, yeah. she also put Ebony down too, though. She or made her stumble. She, yeah. she, she landed some good shots on Ebony too, so. I know, obviously, right here you can tell who wore it um, worse, but this is the ending sequence. Oh boom, my boom. goodness! Yeah, Oof. I mean, oh yeah, we're done. Yes, here. And you but no, Bridges kept landing that one two on her, and it was like O'Connell couldn't get out of the way of those punches. No matter, yeah. I don't know. If, uh, I'm trying to think back if her corner was telling her maybe to uh, move her head, but Bridges kept. And just some brutal shots. And O'Connell has one hell of a chin. They put on a great performance because, I've again, I know I keep pointing out Bridges, but O'Connell was right there with her throwing punches back too. It was just an exciting fight. I thought the ref did a great job when he stopped it because O'Connell was taking a lot of headshots and brutal ones at that. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was a good fight. I. Ebony still has some way to go. Yes. You know what I mean? But definitely um, up and coming. Where do you think she goes from here? That's a good question. Yeah. Um, yeah, th- that's a good question. I want to say she had called. I'm trying to think back to who it was. I, want, I would like to see her fight because I, I'm almost certain her and Cenicia Estrada are um, around the same weight class. Because I know Cenicia is not a very big girl as far as the women's um, division is concerned. So I would like to see that one happen. Yeah, she's, she's rated four in box rec. Um, she has, uh, yeah, Mayeli Flores. Okay. And uh, the, the champ of the division, Julian Avila. Okay. There you yeah. go. So, yeah, some fights. I mean, she's nine and one. So Mayeli Flores, probably. They're both nine and one. All right, excellent. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think Eddie Hearn needs to think about bringing her over here now. Oh, no, no. hundred. Because she has that personality about her. Right, the personality. And obviously the looks <laughs> are what she No, plays. she does it. She definitely has the personality and the business smarts. She, uh, at the weigh-in, was announcing her OnlyFans account. Yes. You right. know what I mean? So she, she knows how to play the game. Well, OnlyFans is... Um, sponsoring, her, too. Sponsoring, thank but you. But she... Said, hey, I have an OnlyFans now. Yes. So, like, you know what I mean? Like, she's doing the right things. 
And I, yeah, definitely time to bring her over to the U.S. And oh, absolutely. May I leave Flores? I think, Easy yeah. Piece. No, absolutely. And if uh, uh, she sounds Mexican, am I right? Uh, yes, is Mexican. She? Okay, there you go. Put yeah. it in Texas or put it here in Las Vegas or even L.A. Cali, yeah. yeah. That, uh, L.A., you could sell that fight easily. Yes. Do an uh, a open air weigh-in, and we all know what's going to happen there, especially in L.A., especially full of Mexican men. That's, come on. Yeah. I'm sorry, but that's the truth. Yeah. They're going to be whistling. They're going to be saying all times of dumb shit, but it's going to sell. All right. So we'll move on to um, the other fight. In Belfast. Yes. Just a quick touch. Um, and it was Conlon versus Guifier. Yeah, and this one was almost Quickly over. Done. Oh, you know what? Let's not forget. After this, we'll go back to Felix Cash. Yeah, I was going to leave that for the end. Okay, okay, okay Because it's not that important. Got it. But yeah, so comes in and finishes him. First round, yeah, what did you think? Yeah, Guifier was... I, I, I can't help but wonder how much that knockout affected him. Because you really, it's hard to tell when can a fighter come back from such a brutal knockout. And maybe I'm looking too much into it, but uh, that was, yeah, he made short work of him. And he's climbing his way back. And yeah. I got to believe he wants Lee, that Lee would rematch. And we all do, because it was a great fight. I would love to see that again. No, Especially uh, with Josh Warrington losing. There's no, there's nothing there anymore for Lee Wood. Well, that's where I burst your bubble. With Warrington losing, there's already talks of Lopez versus Conlon. What are your thoughts about that? I, I don't mind that. I don't mind that based on what we saw with Lopez. And it'd be unifying a belt? No, because uh, Conlon doesn't have a belt. Oh, okay. I swear but, he had a belt. One of the books. They give him belts all the damn time. That's a freaking problem. I, I don't blame you. You probably did think it was a belt, but no. He lost his belt to Lee Wood. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't mind doing that fight, but the question is, is it going to be in Belfast or is it going to be in the States? Because mm. if you're Lopez, you just won the title overseas. Do you really want to defend it overseas again? Hell no. If the money's right, yes. Because um, Conlon is with ESPN. I would think... Oh, no, no, you know what? No. Uh, Luis Alberto Lopez is top rank. Yeah. Because on his trunks, he had the logo. Yeah, yeah. So, no, you're right. Okay, that fight doesn't make sense. No, you're right. Never mind. Yeah, it's going to so, happen. Because yeah, yeah. they're both top rank fighters. And then, yeah, I think that would be a cool fight. You know? But the oh, one no, thing no, I want to talk about, fight. about this fight is look at this coloring in the video. It was terrible. That's what the entire card looked like. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was watching it on, um, it was, what on is the this, app. What is this camera? Or was it the lighting? I don't know. It did look odd now that you mention it. No, they could have adjusted it. You know? It just, it looked, the entire card looked like that. It looked so weird. Yeah. I mean, I, I want to say there was good stuff, but it was this. It was, it was, it was. All right. Quick honorable mention of Kurt Walker. Uh, that he, the young Olympian, Irish Olympian, he was on this card. He uh, did his did his job and won the fight, and he's 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 climbing. Yeah, no, that somebody the, to keep an eye on. I did watch the the undercard of it, and yeah, it was some good fights. Uh, very young guys, but all Irish guys. I didn't know anybody. Oh, Potty Potty McCroy McCroy. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. If you watch that fight against Fe, Fedas. Guy who F -E -D -S, quit in the sixth. Dude, his boxing stance, McCrory. McCrory, I hope I'm pronouncing yeah, yeah, that right. Yeah. Irish fans, I apologize. Dude, he looks like he's ready to fight in a pub. Like, his <laughs> boxing stance is entertaining. Like, if you watch a, watch a little bit of it, watch his boxing stance. He looks like he's about to throw hands in a pub. <laughs> it's hilarious. That was entertaining. Yeah. So, talking about entertaining, um, going back to the Warrington card. Yes. So we had Felix Cash fighting Neves. Right? Yeah, Neves. Yes, Neves. Celso Neves. And uh, I got to tell you, I thought Felix Cash would have finished him. But it, he only won, like, uh, what was it? 7 3 or something. Like yeah, that. but he, he, was out of the, he was out of the ring for, I Not think it's one. nine months. Oh, this, this was hilarious. Yeah. 
So he was out of the ring in the month, takes the win. Now, he is the mandatory versus Austin Emma Willie. Yes, who's sir. Just coming off a win last week. And they got into it, which was crazy. They had him at the broadcasting booth. Yeah, Emma was uh, commentating during the fight. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, this is... You want to jump up? Yeah, go <laughs> I'm in your face. He said, I'll knock you Spock out. Look at this That guy. was awesome. <laughs> I'm excited for this fight. Oh, Emma William takes it. I think it's going to have to be in the UK, though. It's, for it it's to good. Because gen- it'll generate more money in the UK. And it's good for Emma. Yes, exactly. If I'm Emma, I have no problem taking it in the UK. You pull a Devin Haney and you go, you know what? I will come to you. Yeah. And, then and you're still going to make some good money. And it's good. it's good experience for him. You know, like, let's, yeah, go out to the UK, make some money, have a good time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and then, then this little back and forth just added some spice to it. So let's, yeah. let's do oh, it. Oh, there I'm will be excited. playing back and forth. And then, um, yeah, so last thing, Errol Spence. Oh, yes. Unfortunately, got in another car accident. Yeah. Now, supposedly it's not his fault, but. Yeah, he was saying that. They this is ran the, night the when red Crawford... light, right? From what yeah. I read. Yeah, I mean it's front damage, right? Yeah, doo doo. So you know, and this is the cr- after Crawford won. That's wild. Same night, you know. So, but yeah, thankfully he's okay. Everybody was okay. You know, guys just walking around like nothing. Yeah, man, that's crazy. That that dude, man, he's got. He nine has enough lives. money. Get a fucking chauffeur. Right. Okay. Just get a chauffeur. Those guys are professionals. You know? And how much would a chauffeur run him? Let's say it's 70 to 100,000. You can. That's not that bad. You could pay for somebody a like him. No, you pay a cousin. Yes, there you go. You throw him 50,000. 50,000 a year. You're the driver. You get yeah. to hang out, have a good time. Again, yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. And then. um, We have, we have Inuway. Yes, thank coming, you. That's what I wanted to say. That's going to be... That's later tonight. Because we're filming this yeah. on Monday night. Yes. And... Against I'm Paul ready. Butler. In your way, missed weight, but then oh, made the right. second yeah. attempt. The second attempt, but it I was uh, supposedly only a, f- a f- like few minutes later he made the second attempt mm. and made it. So, you know what I'm saying? Had to drop, a, drop some kids off at the pool. <laughs> it was good. Phantom weight title. Yeah. I mean, he didn't look too bad. He I, he always looks real real fucking skinny, mm-hmm. but you know he looked he, he looked decent. I don't know. Maybe that's a good sign for Butler. If hey. he, if he didn't make weight the first time, you never know. But it was like supposedly like two three minutes later he made. It, so. Oh, this is gonna be on Pro Bellum, huh? Yes. But because in a way's top rank, I wonder if they're gonna air it on the app. Um. I should have checked that. Uh, let's see. But yes, um, I think it's on ESPN Plus. Okay, got it. Yeah, ESPN Plus. A uh, Japan's on Amazon Prime. It's pay per view in Australia. Hmm. Thirty bucks. Wow. And then hmm. UK, UK. Not sure. <laughs> got it. All right, I think that's uh good. We um we do have UFC to cover, but we'll catch you on the yes. next one. And a quick news and note, or a quick little uh up uh, or breaking news, I guess if you want to call it. A uh, Golden Boy won the bid uh for uh, Virgil Ortiz versus Stanionis, who is a uh, PBC fighter. I think they won the bid at two point three million. Ooh. So it looks like that fight's going to happen. Virgil Ortiz against Emantis Estaniones, yeah. which is a big deal because I would have guessed that dude would have fought Boots Ennis because they're part of the same umbrella as far as BBC is concerned. So to me, this is another feather in the cap for Virgil Ortiz's re- resume. Should he beat Stanionis? Because Stanionis won't be a walk in the park, but we'll touch on that fight later. Just wanted to let you guys know. That that fight's going to happen in 2023, and I'm excited for that one. All right. But All hey, right, guys. Let us know. What do they do? Like, comment, subscribe, and hit that bell notification button to know when we put, post the next episode. 
Roger that. Just bleed.